Why do I seem to always start my weekend reading vlogs in the car? It's normally because I've got things to be doing. Anyway, I'm just back from the vets with Patty. I think every weekend I seem like I'm at the vet the night. But it's just all checkups, falling or getting spayed. And she's got a bit of swelling, but they're not concerned about it. Just keep an eye on it for the next week. And she's pretty much back to normal. We'll just will her wound heals, but she's doing great. It's my friend's birthday at the start of next week, so I'm off to the shops just now just to get some cos. I've got some books to go with her present, obviously, and um, one of the books I bought her, uh, she messaged me during the week going, uh, have you read this book? And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, going, I've got you for your birthday because I really enjoyed it. It's Wayward, by the way, um, by Amelia Hart. That right, I'll put it here. Um, and she replied, Going, Yeah, I've only got an hour left in audio, it's amazing. And I was like, Yay! So now I need to get a replacement book and some Nicky Nacks. She, uh, she loves tea and she does yoga, a bit like me. So, I uh, also don't think she watches these videos, but if she does, hopefully, I've already given her a gift by then, by the time she sees us. Then I'll be coming back. I've finished a book this morning which I'll give you a review of and going to bake another cake. I feel like I'm on a roll and what I can't decide to do is uh, whether I go for a run and listen to my audiobook or start the beginnings of the garden tidy up or listen to my audiobook. I'm going to start listening to The Dead Zone by Stephen King. Anyway, come along with me. Right, I'm on about buying that until the end of March. But that did not include any pre-orders I made in 2023, of which this is likely because it's from Waterstone. And this one, I don't know who it is, so I think it's from a publisher. So let's open it together. Actually, before I open it, I've described, so, on about buying band until March, but I want to be more, I don't like just in, like come April splurge and just pretty much by the amount of books I probably would have done had I been out of control, which I was in 2023, because I've got way too many books. So I saw this thing on TikTok and it was Little Gem Books, I think. Um, she shared this amazing tip, which was for every page, so if you're reading a book that is 395 pages, for every page in that book that you are reading, once you've finished the book, you put the number of pennies for that. So in like Scottish money, that would be £3.95 for a 395 page book. So that's a great idea. So you can put it into like a money jar, but I don't really carry cash around. You know, like ever since the 2019 days, I always use like Apple Pay or like touch card, whatever. Anyway. I don't carry cash around, so putting money into an actual jar is not something that I'm going to be able to do very often. So what I'm going to do, so the book I just finished, Sunny, I'll give you a review later, um, was 342 pages. So I've just moved £3.42 from my current account to my tiny savings account. And then I can save up and buy a book as opposed to splurge. That is the plan. Let's see how that goes. Anyway, this one is from... Literally PR. I don't know. Actually, I think we were messaging each other on Instagram. <gasps> I think it's hard. No, no, it's paperback. <coughs> don't, <coughs> excuse me, don't worry, I don't mind paperback. I love paperback. Oh, there's some info. Oh, there's a recipe to come with it too. A note from the author. Dear reader, I am delighted to be sending you an early, cop early copy of my novel 38 Days of Rain, which publishes in March. I hope you'll find as much meaning in this story as I did. My name is Eva Asprakis. I am 24 year old and last May I suffered a missed abortion due to complications with polycystic ovary syndrome, PCOS. Um, prior to that, three doctors had told me I would never conceive. Okay, so trigger warnings right now for any fertility stuff for people, so just skip ahead. Like you, I'm a lover of words and find comfort in connecting to characters. This was how I coped in the following weeks 
in the weeks following my pregnancy loss. When my partner and I were forced apart due to visa restrictions, I could not grieve with him. And so our protagonist, Andrula Demetrio, was born. Andrula, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Andrula, I'll put it up here. Story is an exploration of womanhood. Like you and I, she is desperate for connection and searching in all the wrong places between the trial of immigration and the tools of infertility. Andrula must hold on to her sister, must hold on to sisterhood, her love of, for language and cult films and the man she has crossed oceans to be with. Early readers have described the book as a raw and stunning and I hope it resonates with you. Here's the author there. So let's have a look at the book. Oh, look at this cover. 38 Days of Rain by Eva Asparakis. I don't know if she's Cypriot. Yeah, I think the author is and so um, the character is. What matters more, your place as a daughter or as a mother? This sounds lovely. Also, look at the cover. So, this uh, since it's coming out in March, I'll read this in the coming weeks so I can uh, feed it back to you. There's also, look, there's a recipe for a Cypriot dish called... I don't know what the Cypriot dish... Food. This book might make me hungry too if there's Cypriot food. How lovely is that? Oh, so thank you very much to its literary press, um, literary PR who sent me this. And it's publishing people on International Women's Day, which is the 8th of March. It should all be in your diaries. Anyway, here it is. <laughs> I'm surprised I've been able to, I, I've made... I have no idea what this is. It's a pre-order and... <gasps> oh, I forgot. I mean, I know it is a gift uh, to me, from me. But this was one. I forgot. I got one that was signed by the author, although, you know, I've not met them, so... This is a new horror. It's called Butter by Asako Yuzuki. Um, and I bought it because... <laughs> the protagonist sounds amazing. There are two things I simply cannot tolerate. Feminists and margarine. <laughs> so let me read. I mean, look. Also, oh, look at this cover. Look at this cover. So, gourmet cook Manako Kaji sits in, Tokyo, sits in a Tokyo detention house convicted of serial murders of lonely businessmen who she is said to have seduced with her delicious home cooking. The case has captured the nation's imagination, but Kaji refuses to speak with the press. That's until a journalist, Rika Mashida, writes a letter asking for a recipe for beef stew, and Kaji can't resist writing back. Rika, Rika, Rika R I K, the only woman in our news office, works late each night, rarely cooking more than ramen. As the visits unfold between her and Kaji, they seem closer to a masterclass in food than journalistic research. Rika hopes her gastronomic exchange will help soften the steely Kaji, but it seems that Rike, Rika sorry, might be the one changing. With each meal she eats, something is awakening in her body. Might she and Kaj, Kaji have more in common than she once thought? It's a runaway international bestseller, and this is one of the, one of the other reasons I was hooked on it. Inspired by the real case of a corn woman known as the Konkatsu Killer, Asako Yuzuki, 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 Yuzuki's Butter, translated by Polly Barton, is a vivid, unsettling exploration of misogyny, obsession, romance, and the transgressive pleasure of food in Japan. Now, you want me to read this all pretty soon, don't you? So I can give you some feedback. Loads of amazing blurbs on the back. A tale of loneliness and desire, even descriptions like a perfect masterpiece and creme de la creme are inadequate for a book like this. Inspired by a true story, food, gender and violence are explored in this delicious novel. I mean, that combo, food, gender and violence. <laughs> and based on a true story, like a true crime story. <laughs> I am here for this. So anyway, both of these are very different. But if there's one that you want me to read first and give you some feedback on, let me know. Now I'm off to bake cake. So I'm um, shouting above the podcast right now that OH is listening to the podcast. So 
Jason Sudeikis. I'll record this Ashley. on full so, speed. Uh, the not full speed, the but you can watch me make it. Um, um, it's music in the background because I can't talk over that. Anyway, here's what I'm making. What a, what a, what a, what a it is cinnamon um, apple um, cake is, with maple icing. Yeah. And it became, eventually, yeah, I had a relationship with Harry Styles, who was in the movies. People, there was this whole sort of thing that people. Main one look like that. But like, was really angry about it also in the movie. I didn't even remember this time, but. This is a final product. The icing is still dripping and setting. Oh, but it's maple syrup icing. So here is my apple cinnamon and maple icing cake. <laughs> Can't wait till that icing set. It's Saturday afternoon. Well, I say afternoon, it's nearly tea time, but the OH is a wee out, the other half. He's a wee out to watch the rugby because Scotland are playing England. I might watch a bit of it later. But anyway, I now have cosy time. Now that I've made a bit of cake, my cake, so I'm just letting the icing and all that set. I've got myself a big mug of tea. Look at this mug. Treat it to myself the other day. It's a nice spring one. It's like a little nest of eggs so pretty so i've got my rooibos 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 tea, tea i can never say it right it's one of my favorite herbal teas so forget this i'm putting youtube ambience on the telly patty is here yep she's alive <laughs> and lucy is over here cozy up so it's snoozy's time for the doggos and i want to show the books i've got some of them I'm still reading from the last vlog, I know. But I did finish Sunny by Suki Ojla. And although it wasn't the book for me, I highly recommend it for romance readers. Uh, for fans of Bridget Jones, I think it is. Bridget Jones with a South Asian character, which makes it even more, except you know, like even more enjoyable, because we need more of this. Um, it Sunny is a lovely character in that she's in her thirties, she's living at home with her parents, all all her friends are kind of partnering off, getting married, yada yada. So she's feeling like she's not achieved in life she's desperate for a relationship she's desperate for her own like her own space um her friendships are challenging and a little toxic in that she is the the one that is has the the mickey taken out of her a little bit because she's single and still dating and has the fun dating horror stories she plays the perfect child in that she watches Seek TV with her mum, makes um, sag and samosas, whilst on the other side is sneaking out with uh, gin and a tin for nights out with a whole host of different guys. She's trying to like discover her own, um, or hopefully discover the love of her life. Um, it is funny, it's heartwarming, it's very much modern day dating tropes. I think the reason it's not for me is because I'm discovering I'm not really a romance reader, but also I just don't really, I can't relate to modern day dating. I think if I was single nowadays, and this is not because 
I don't think anyone should date this way at all. It's just me. If I was single, I would probably just not date and just like live quietly at home with my dogs. Guess it just seems like so much hassle. Um, and as long as I've got my dogs in my books, you know, don't make them long. I'm, I'm lucky. Although they're lucky to have me as the other half, and I've been off the dating scene for a long time. So Tinder et al didn't exist when I was dating. Um. So, you know, at least that's a good way for like, anyway, I don't know because I can't comment. And this is why I think it's not the book for me, but I still highly recommend it. Um, it's about time that romance had more diversity in it. It's about time there was a more diverse Bridget Jones that actually I thought was better. Um, so yeah, check it out. I read this for my Lauren and the Books Patreon book club, which... I think it's been discussed this weekend or next weekend. I'll need to double check. Then I've still got these two on the go, but I'm hoping to finish at least one of them this weekend. Um, Because I also read this during the week, The Mystery Guest by Nita Prose. <sighs> I read it mostly in audio. I love The Maid. It is very cosy. Um... It's a lovely cosy, I would say it's a cosy murder mystery, but it's not really about the murder mystery. It's more about Nita, um, Molly the maid. Um, so it was the maid. And this one is very similar. Yeah, there's a murder mystery. I would say there's, there's more about the story of the murder mystery. There's more story about her, her um, gran that brought her up. Their relationship is just lovely. It's just super, super cosy. Um, and on that basis, I would say it was probably about like a three out of five star for me, which is a good read. Um, it's very Agatha, is Agatha Isky, <laughs> Agatha Christie esque. Um, Molly's just a beautiful, lovely, quirky character. I love reading about her. I love reading about her relationship with her um, gran. You learn more about her relationship, her, her childhood with her gran and you know, like the kind of detached relationship she has with her mum. But the kind of murder mystery element of the book in this one is about, uh, is he a crime? Uh, he's an author. He's an author that's come into the ho hotel to do like a big announcement. He's like a best-selling author. And then he ends up dead. And it's all the unravelling of that. So it's a fun read. I think... For fans of The Appeal, The Thursday Murder Club, those kind of books, you'll really enjoy this one. Let's look at the spread edges. So that is the reason that I've not finished these two. That's what I'm saying is the reason. Um, I'm starting a mix of reading The Dead Zone by Stephen King, both in paperback. Tiny, tiny. Stephen, stop with the tiny text. Uh, I've never read this one before. I'm reading one Stephen King a month and this one is it. It says, recoil in horror. Recoil in horror as you're touched by a young man cursed with the power to perceive the evil in men's souls and whose ability to see into the future forces him into a terrifying confrontation with a charismatic, power-hungry and infinitely dangerous man. So I've got, and what I normally do with my Stephen King reads is, um, if I'm lucky enough and I have an audible credit, is if they're kind of biggish books with tiny text. I'll do a bit of reading in paperback, but also listen to an audible. Um, and the narrator for the book on, on audio is James Franco. Only discovered that this morning. Then this is a book that a colleague in work uh, lent me because I'd mentioned this author. So it's Claire Keegan, small things like these. She's an Irish author who I keep seeing on on here, on Bookstagram, on Book Talk, and I've not read one of her books. They're pretty tiny. Well, this one is anyway. Um, this one was the Booker Prize 2022 shortlist. I have no idea. I think Claire Keegan writes contemporary literary fiction. Um, she's an Irish author and... Since in March, I think there's a lot of like read Irish author um, sort of reading challenges. I don't know if there's an actual, there might be, maybe there's an Irish author awards. Let me check that out. I'll let you know here. Um, but this says, I actually don't know what it's about. In 1985, in an Irish town during the weeks leading up to Christmas, 
Bill Furlong, a coal and timber merchant, faces his busy season. As he goes round the house, he's making deliveries. He feels the past rising up to meet him and encounters the complicit silences of a small con small community controlled by the church. Hmm. Also, nice text and paragraph spacing. Lessons could be learned there, Stephen King. Anyway, so what am I going to do now? I am got my cup of tea. I've got my PJ bottoms on. And I'm going to have a read of this. And a party. And Lucy. And I'll put some YouTube ambience on. I don't know which one. Maybe either a rainy scene. Although it's been a lovely sunny day today. Lucy and I went litter picking in our neighbourhood. This is something we do regularly. Um, picked up loads. We even actually picked up a Samsung phone. It'd been thrown in a bush. It's like something from one of my wee murder shows. Anyway, I shall crack on reading. I think I might read paper names first. Uh, I'm sure I was still reading this in my last reading vlog. I promised to finish it. I mean, it's not that many pages. Oh, and I actually finished this. How many pages is it? 221 pages. So if I finish this, I have to put £2.21 into my savings account. <laughs> it's Sunday. Oh, and the kids are, the kids are coming in. It's your dinner? It's your lunchtime? Sorry, not dinner. Can you see them? They've just been a walk with her daddy. They usually make noise. We can come back in and we'll say goodbye. But I'm here to give you an update. Firstly, we've got the Rebus tea. Mm. Look at my spring mug. Rebus, one of my favourites. So, last night, do you know what? I was reading this. Paper Names by Susie Lowe. How does it even get dusty? Love this. This comes out on March 21st. It is, I don't even know how to describe it. The other half's coming in. The way she was just coming in to give me a latest update on Patty's poo. <laughs> Any dog parents who have dogs and uh, share the, the responsibility with someone else, discussion about poo consistency isn't unusual. She's okay. Anyway, paper names. Ah, contem Mm, literary fiction, maybe, is the genre. Three characters, Oliver, Tammy, Tony. Tony and Tammy are father and daughter. Oliver lives in the apartment block that Tony is the doorman for. Um, Tony, is a Tony and Tammy are Chinese immigrants into is it New York, I think, into America, searching for the American dream. There's their how their lives connect across past, so 1997 and present day, is really smartly done. I don't want to say too much on this, other than it really, it really makes a lot of commentary about privilege, racism, immigration, sense of belonging. The American Dream and so much more at only 221 pages this packs an absolute punch I think it's a debut possibly I was kindly gifted this by Verve Books um, when I read the synopsis I mean on also look at it just look at the look at this beautiful cover it's so pretty. Anyway, highly, highly, highly recommend it. Get it on pre-order. Download it on audiobook or request it from your library ASAP. Then, what was the other? A colleague in work gifted me Claire Keegan. What well, lent me small things like these. I, it's dead short, it's like 100 
110 pages, yes. And what's the space? Um, it, they're an Irish author. Um, this makes a lot of commentary. Um, makes a lot of commentary. Um, it kind of talks, it's set in an era where um, if Irish girls became pregnant and perhaps weren't married or all the other iterations of a young girl falling pregnant um, and the, they are sent to like a convent to have said child and then um, what happens to the kids are not that they stay with their mum but it's cleverly done in that it follows who's the main act? Furlough, who's a coal and timber merchant. So it's set like around Christmas during the time of where they were walking past with the dogs. <laughs> I thought I better not look like I was holding up a book and talking to my phone, which it was. Um, sorry, so I thought I was putting the hair away. Um, he's a coal and timber merchant at his busiest time of year because it's just on the run up to Christmas and he delivers firewood to the convent or a small sort of church um, and where he stumbles across kind of young girls who, and it's particularly a young girl who is in a lot, lot of desperation um, who has a uh, who's had a child, I think 14 weeks old or something that you learn through the story but also takes him back to the fact that that's kind of what happened to his mum or what would have happened to his mum had where his mum worked, not taking, um, I suppose, taking them under his wing. It's, I, I can't believe how much this author covers in this size book. I, I find it really poignant, heartfelt, amazing social commentary, poetically written, but I do wonder, so, the author has many other books. I don't know if it's in here. Lucy, I hear you. That's the there. Stories are translated in 30 languages. And this one was shortlisted for the Booker Prize. Also oh, in papers. Is that what you call them? So pretty. However, Haunting, yes. Deemed a masterpiece, yes. Is it for me? Like, do I want to read more of their books? I would say if any of that resonates with you and sounds fascinating, do it and read them. Like, it's beautifully written, but it's maybe not a genre that I'm drawn to. I don't know why. I don't know why. And I'm sorry, because I know Claire Keegan is very much loved. Um, but maybe just not my kind of author. Or my kind of the story how we read. Anyway, oh, that was the books I've read. I've got 100 pages left in where sleeping girls um, die. Oh my god, why can't I remember them? Here, 100 pages left. So I'm 100% finishing that today because it's getting twisty as... And so, if not, well it won't be because I'm finishing I'm finishing the vlog just now, um, so it will be in next week's. I'll give you a, a, a summary of it, but I want to show you another book that was kindly gifted to me from also Verve Books because I love Verve Books. They're a UK independent publisher, and this one is The Damages by Genevieve Scott. Wait till you hear the synopsis. This is getting serious. The glasses are coming off. What I remember best about that week in January is trying to keep track of all the lies I told. 1997, Ontario has been hit by a days-long life-endangering ice storm and on Regis University campus, with classes cancelled, the students are partying. Amid it all, 18-year-old Rosie's roommate Megan goes missing. As a panic search ensues, Rose is blamed for not keeping close her eye on Megan and the incident casts a shadow over the next two decades of her life. 2020, Rosie's former partner, Lucas, the father of her 11-year-old son, is accused of SA. The accusation brings new details of an old story to light, forcing Ross 
to revisit a dark moment from her past. Roz must take a hard look, not only at the father of her child, but also her own mistakes, her own trauma, and supposedly liberal period in which she grew up. This sounds so good. It's out on the 24th of April. So I'll be reading that before then, so I can give you an idea of what it's about. This sounds amazing. Um, does this sound like your kind of book? Let me know, let me know, let me know. Anyway, so that was my reading weekend. I uh, did a wee bit of tidying in the garden. Um, as you know, you saw me baking. Um, I went a run this morning. It's the first time I've gone for a run in about a month. That was a struggle. But an audiobook kept me going. Started listening to The Burbs by Daphne du Maurier, which I've read before. It was another reread. I love the book and the movie. Um, and so just now I'm going to go plant some deadish plants that I bought from the shop to try and save them. Plant some of them just now. I know it's only February, but I'm actually getting out of my garden. And then, oh, I only forgot to tell you, watched this true crime documentary last night. Oh my god, it's three parts. Like, you could watch the trailer, but it's about a home invasion, kidnapping that goes wrong. And then the story, like, that is just the start of the story. It is, like, I can't even say, because if I was to tell you the the like the, the name that this should be given it would be just telling you though it would be an absolute spoiler it is utterly bonkers true crime watch it but if you love true crime watch it anyway i am now going to go off plant the last of my plants finish the book that i've got on the go so i can maybe start some new books next week which i'll share you share with you next weekend and what else am I going to do? Watch more of True Detective, Night Country, and we've got a gusto to make for dinner. Mmm, yum, 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 yum. Anyway, I hope you have all or are having, will have a fabulous weekend whenever you're watching it. Thanks as always for watching, for commenting, for sharing, um, and for subscribing. And if you like this video and you haven't subscribed, please like and subscribe for more chatter chatter from me. Anyway, have a great one. Thank you all. Love yes. Bye. Bye.